Hi, I'm Great Television's Iowa Political Director Dave Price, and this is Inside Iowa Politics. Governor Kim Reynolds does not do weekly news conferences or at least regularly scheduled news conferences as much as her predecessors who I've covered since I moved here in 2001. So we're talking about former governors Tom Vilsack, Chet Culver, and Terry Branstad. Branstad in particular, almost like clockwork, had a regularly scheduled news conference each week where reporters could ask him about whatever. Now, when Governor Reynolds does what we call gaggles, where reporters all surround her, or where she takes questions after events like she did this past week. She does cover a lot of topics, and we can't always get into all of them in the daily news. So we want to do that this week. Now, one of the public events she did was to sign the latest round of tax cuts. It will be the 3.8% flat tax that takes effect on January 1st. Her response about taxes, a little long, a little detailed here, but here's how she addresses what Republicans have done since they've had control of the legislature since 2017. You know, when I took office, Iowa's personal income tax rate was the sixth highest in the nation at 8.98%. I think we had nine brackets and the list goes on and on. And it was certainly clear that we needed to make a change and that's exactly what we've done. Since 2018, I've proposed and working with the legislature have had the opportunity to sign into law four landmark tax reform bills, which not only set the stage for the first ever flat income tax rate, but it also eliminated taxes on retirement and inheritance income, cut property taxes, and made our tax code more friendly for farm families. She also signed into law tax incentives for a mega program. It's the major economic growth attraction, and it would involve huge projects, not data centers, though. Under this plan, companies could develop massive projects on farmland, for example. They'd have to spend at least a billion dollars on a facility that's engaged in research, advanced manufacturing, or bioscience. There'd be seven of these certified development sites, and they have to be at least 250 acres to qualify for the tax incentives. So do they already have companies in mind? Here's how she responded. We possibly. Possibly we have. I'm trying to think. I don't want to miss misspeak. We really haven't done a lot of marketing on it because we were still working on the details as we working through the legislative session. So as we've talked to um, potential prospects, that's something that we've talked about. Um, you know, we want those big investments, those capital investments in our state, and we need to be competitive for that as well. And so, you know, I don't, we, we've, we've highlighted that this is something that we are working on. The reason I hesitated too is we thought we were going to get it done last year. So, you know, for two years we've been working on this. And so, we have, you know, used it as a competitive tool uh, for us to land significant economic development projects in the state of Iowa. So uh, they were aware that we were working on it because we thought this was really something that would be advantageous for us to market our state. Starting July 1st, it's a state crime if you're in this state after being previously deported or denied entry into the country. Law enforcement has told us they don't know how to implement this. They say they don't always have access to the federal information about somebody's immigration status. And they also don't know if they have the resources to physically drive somebody to an airport and then oversee that that person gets deported. I asked the governor about what her administration will do to provide these answers for Iowa law enforcement. Well, make no mistake, we talked to them. They talked to them before we implemented it. This was implemented in Texas. It came from law enforcement there. Dave, with any bill that we pass, there's still always questions and what that looks like. So, of course, we'll continue to work with them. And if we need additional legislation or if we need to provide some rulemaking authority or whatever we need to do, uh, we, we'll, you know, we'll work with Commissioner Baines and we'll make sure uh, that that information gets out to law enforcement. But at least it begins to give them a tool to address or, and it just, it sends a message. You know, this is not where you want to come if you've been deported or if you were denied and you're in this country illegally we know the consequences of illegal immigration. By the way, she is referencing Department of Public Safety Commissioner Stephen Baines. Now, one other topic here, and that was a report in the Daily Caller. It quoted her spokesperson saying that she was interested in becoming the U.S. Secretary of Education under Donald Trump if he becomes president again. 
But here is how she addressed it when we talked to her about it. I got a lot of work to do as governor. I love what I'm doing, and I'm really proud of the work we've done, but we've got a lot of work to do. So uh, I think, you know, that I'm sometimes too passionate, and uh, they read way more into it than they should have. Hey! You know you're not interested. No, I'm not. I, no, they, the report said they thought I was, and that was, I think they mistook just the way I talk about education as maybe pick me, and that was not the case. So just to be clear, yeah, just to be clear. And now the final five. Number one, spokesperson versus the governor. So unusual that we have the spokesperson on the record saying that the governor would be interested in secretary of education, and then the governor publicly saying she would not. Quite a disconnect there. Number two, Reynolds and Trump relationship. Perhaps if nothing else, this is another public signal from the governor showing that she wants to try to repair that relationship with the former president. Number three, mega possibilities. One interesting aspect of all of this is you could have a foreign company, part of this billion dollar project could be on Iowa farmland, just can't farm on that land and get these tax incentives. Number four, tax challenge. There are about a third of the Iowa Democrats who supported the Republican flat tax plan at the state house. That can make it a little more challenging for Democratic state house candidates to campaign that this tax plan is bad. Now, number five, immigration action. The governor has taken action, so have other Republican governors. It seems like right now it is up to governors and the president to do anything in whatever way about immigration since Republicans in Congress refuse to do that. We will see if voters demand something from Congress during these congressional elections this November. Thanks for joining us for Inside Iowa Politics.